and it start whenever you like. When you stop talking, be nice. Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee. And I'm Robin Clevett. And we're from the Skill Builder channel and we're bringing you yet another track saw in our big extravaganza where we look at all the different track saws available, and well, not all of them, but the ones we can get hold of. And then we're gonna put them all together in the end and let you see how they perform up against each other. We've got something at the low end of the price bracket here, we thought we'd better not just look at all the posh ones like the Maffel and so on, we'd better look at something for the budget guy. Supposing you're the kind of person who doesn't need a track saw that much, supposing you're a plumber, electrician, just want to take up a few floorboards and not make a mess of them, you know, you might be taking up a bit of oak flooring and just want to run along that, that tongue and groove line just to cut the tongue out, that mm. kind of thing, mm. then Maybe something like this, I'm not saying it is, but maybe something like this, which brings it down at the sort of 150 quid mark. The Urbar is the screw fix own brand, and it comes with a two year warranty. I've not had a lot of luck with them, I've got to say that. I've had a couple which haven't done particularly well, but you can take them back. So it's got a quite a big motor. It's a brushed motor, it's an old fashioned motor, isn't yeah. it? The other interesting thing is this has got the largest blade in its class. It's what got a 185 mil blade. A lot of the others are 165 mil blades, which clearly gives it a bit more depth of cut with that is 67 millimeters that's printed on the back there. Does the motor actually stand up to doing something that deep? Even if we just cut through some sawn timber 50 mil thick, that would be interesting. Looking at the build quality of the machine, well, it is what you'd expect. You know, I mean, there's certain parts of it, like this particular, the slider is it wobbles around it's pretty flimsy you know it's it's oh yeah it's yeah. all a bit a bit loose and that you've got to treat it with a bit of care i would say so let's have a little look how the bevel works so let's undo the nuts front and back and that again is just a very basic crude idea there isn't it yeah exactly yeah i mean it's all you know the build quality is it an undercut or undercut or an overcut or not for that let's see if it can take it down to so straight away, you can sort of pull it round to minus one. Can you? So it doesn't have click stops for that, you just select that. You just have a quick look, do them a favour. No, you can just select that, Roger. Okay. So you've got to sort of set yourself on zero. And this comes in the kit as well, by the way. So you're not just getting the saw, you're getting a couple of rails in there. Yeah? You've got some little joining strips for them there which you need a screwdriver, an ordinary Phillips screwdriver to get them out. Oh look, blimey, look at this, look. Oh, but it's quite thick, look at the aluminium. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's quite thick, it's not, it's not lightweight and flimsy. I mean, it's- Look at that, in the kit, a couple oh, of quick release clamps. That's all right as well. Here's the Allen key, spare pair of brushes. They always give you, you know when you get real cheap Chinese tools, like Evolution. You know the brushes are gonna go, they actually just- I don't know, do you know what? I've got loads of brushes at home and I never label them, so I wouldn't know what they go in anyway, but. Okay, so let's see how this slides I out. I don't find myself changing brushes on a regular basis, I've got to say. We're loose -ish. Let's talk more graft. Same affair, let's have a quick look at that. So this, basically, is not giving us a long rail, it's just giving us a regular size rail just to do a bit of eight by four sheet, but still not eight feet, is it? So this is only about 1400, this okay. will get you across. Let's the ask the big question, while you're doing that, I'm gonna get a Festool rail, see if that saw fits it. Do you know what, that's, that's quite good. It's gone, it's gone pretty flat and square, you know? I mean, I'm always a bit nervous about these joining strips, but that's pretty flat and square. For a reasonably priced... Oh, yeah. Cheap. Cheap, yeah. Cheap. Uh, I mean, having said that, we got thing. the Urbal. I did actually ask Triton, because Triton have got a cheap one as well, uh, which um, I've used. I had one Any at good? one point. I uh, had to give it away as a, a bribe to somewhere. And, and apparently, I, I spoke to a guy the other day, your apprentice, Josh. Oh, yeah. And he said, I'm not using it anymore, but it's still on my firm. The, the boys are using it, so sub 150, I don't know what that Triton one is. And then there's another one called Titan. Confusing or what? It is. But that, Triton I'll tell you what mate, that, that works, that's okay. It's not actually quite on there. There's nothing wrong the, with uh, that. Just not, just gonna take, take these. Do you know what, do you know why that is? There's an anti-kickback thing. And every time you put it there on the go. rail. Oh, you need to actually lock that. You up. have to lock it in, yeah? Oh, which yeah. is annoying there you go. beyond belief, yeah? How's it run right, now? Right, now, watch this, right? It'll run forward, not bad. 
it won't run back. I mean, that's quite a good safety device, especially if handy men might go out and buy people. Or handy like, women. Handy people. So the blade change is you go up to here, you select that on the on the top, press your button in, you go down. Now, you can see it's not locked, is no. it? Right. When you lock the spindle, that actually also locks the blade in place. Put the Allen key in the window, change the blade, slip it out. We've only borrowed this machine, so we won't touch it. I must admit though, Roger, that's Feel how robust that is. We haven't even tried it no. on this track. We've only tried it on the first Stick it on its own track and see how the anti-kickback feature is. That's there. Yeah. I, I, do you know what? I, I, I wouldn't say you can actually, with one Phillips screw in there, you could take it off. Have a little look. Mm, yeah, it's all right. It would annoy me though, using that. Oh yeah, because every, you know, you do really want to put it back sometimes, do. don't you? you yeah, all I mean? the time. You might have done a scribe cut. The last thing you want to do is take it off. When you take it off, you rock that, unless you're, if you're not clamped down, just by taking it off, you might just do that with your, and then you're trying to line it back up. And I think like you say, if you're a handy person and you haven't used one of these machines, so bear in mind that this is quite powerful. So you want to be supporting your workpiece properly. You don't want any flimsy, uh, you know, you don't want yeah. any movement in your workpiece at all. Whatever you're cutting, support it. Now what Robin does, very sensibly, because he's a sensible kind of guy, is, um, except on a Friday night, yeah. um, it, he puts something underneath, the sacrificial piece underneath, so he's just cutting into that, so it's a bit of OSB under there, but it means that whatever you're cutting into is rock steady. But um, we'll show you that. Yeah, now. and also, um, by cutting into a board, and you're using a dust extraction, you're actually drawing more out, so nothing's oh, tipping yeah. out underneath as well. Yeah, so, point. yeah, so you get a little bit more of the dust out as well, so that's quite nice. And yeah. the work is fully, fully supported as well. So we're gonna go out there and do some work. It's got power. It's a little bit rough in terms of the vibration on the machine, but it's done a very decent job on the cut and there's no breakout. Um, I'll tell you what I think is that all this business here is a little bit confusing until you get the, the hang of it because I was thinking, oh, which is the blade change? The blade change is that one the full depth is that one, and the scribe is that one. So once you get the hang of that and you know what you're doing in terms of that, and the adjustment is quite crude, so there's no fine adjustment there, you just gotta pick it out. And So in terms of if you were taking up floorboards in the house and you wanted to be absolutely precise, so you didn't nick any pipes or anything underneath, then. You just have to be a bit careful about that adjustment. I would say the thing to do with these machines is to practice with them, because if you practice, you get to know the machine, uh, it, it, there's nothing wrong with it, really. The only thing I don't like, I really don't like that anti-kickback, because I like to slide the machine backwards and forwards, and every time you've got to remember to disengage that anti-kickback knob to pull it back. And if you don't, and you do what I did, and you move that rail, even a minutest amount, as you, as you pull it back, you move the rail, it's game over. You've got to line the whole thing up again, which is annoying. So I can understand why that anti-kickback feature is there. Good idea. I prefer it when they're electronically protected, but then again, that's what you pay all those extra hundreds of pounds for. So if you're prepared to put up with that anti-kickback, then yeah, good machine. The only downside was that I couldn't be bothered to put that track together every time, but then I'd probably just use one of my other tracks anyway. But my friend Steve, who you will remember, some of you will remember, yep. if you look at the, uh, the 35A oh, no. build, Steve was the guy that used to chain smoke his way through all those videos. It's like everything, it's all about technique. We're talking about that anti-kickback, but actually when I just flick it and pull it back, you get used to it. It's like getting used to everything. It's like getting a new car. You think, oh, is it really that nice? After you've had it for six months, you think, yeah, I really didn't know how nice this was, because you just don't know the benefits of yeah. it. All the so Steve bought this 
basically as his rough and ready because he's got a festool yeah. and he didn't want to take his nice festool out for ripping up stuff yeah. all on the site. So he takes this out and um, that's what he uses for his sort of day-to-day -day rough work, yeah? So he's quite happy with it. Oh, well, you must thank him for us. Thanks, Steve. So don't forget, if you're interested in track saws, we've got this big review coming up where we're gonna be looking at all the major brands in the UK. I must say that because you American viewers who say, why haven't you got this one in and that one? Because we live in England. We don't get all the things that you guys get out there. So we're doing what is available in the UK, the most popular track saws, and we'll be bringing you that roundup pretty soon. We will. Mm -hmm.